Hello everyone, Colin Cadet here for Woodwork Web. Today we're doing a follow-up video to the video that we did on box joint jigs. And today we're going to make what's called uh, Lynn Sabin's jig. And it's a modified Lynn Sabin's jig and we've got the plans off of the, the Leeway website which is now called the Shark Guard uh, website, sharkguard.com. So if you go to that website, you can look around for the Lynn Sabin uh, jig. And it's the same as what Matthias Waddell does on his website. But we're going to do something a little bit different with ours. We're going to make it a little bit wider, and we'll show you when we get finished why we've done that. So we're going to go step by step. We're not going to actually show you how to do it, but we're going to go through step by step because it's pretty simple and we're not going to give you the plans because you can get the plans off of uh, the Leeway website, the sharkguard.com website, or you can go to Matthias Waddell's site and uh, I think he's actually still selling, he is actually selling these uh, and his version of it, which he uses the crank, um, the, the gears, the wooden gears to actually go through. We're not going to go to that degree. We're going to make a little bit simpler version, and we'll show you why as we go along. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut the base. So this is our, our, our mock-up, our demo model that we made to see how we like this, and we, we really do like this. Uh, but basically we're going to do the base and we're actually going to make it a little bit wider. So follow with us as we go along. For the purpose of this video, we've removed the guards from the uh, table saw so you can actually see better what we're doing. We highly recommend that you leave the guards on that your saw and that you work safely and know and understand all of the mechanics of your tool and how to use it properly. And the very first thing when you're using a table saw is to make sure that the table saw blade is no higher than a quarter to a half tooth above the size of your material. So we're lowering the tooth or the, the blade here and there it is. It's a about half a tooth or a quarter of a tooth above the material and that's to give the optimum cut and the safest cut. So the first thing we're going to do is cut the base to width and length. Cut the base for our finger joint jig and now we're going to be cutting the sides, the outsides, and we're using plywood in all cases for the base and for all of the sides and all of the components because it's the most stable wood that we can get. Now the we're going to cut the two, the front and the back rails, and the front rail calls for four and a half inches. I'm actually going to cut it higher. I'm going to cut it at six inches. And the reason for that is when we made our uh, demo version here to try this jig out, we found that because this bottom is split by the saw, and you can see that the saw comes through and, and splits this, we found that there was a little bit of flex in, in the whole jig. So we wanted to make this a little bit higher to reduce that amount of flex. So we're going to cut the front and these rear rails. Okay, and this will be for that front rail and this is six inches wide now. Okay, I've gone ahead on the table saw and cut out almost all of the components and there's nothing particularly difficult about these. They're just um, square sided as long as you make sure that all of your cuts are, are accurate and 90 degrees and parallel, uh, everything will work out good. 
So I've just gone ahead and, as I said, just cut all of the components. Now, just before assembly, there's a couple of things that we have to do. The first thing we have to do is, I'm going to turn this sideways so you can see, this carriage actually moves back and forth on this piece of wood here. So what we have to do is we have to cut out a slot around this board and I'll be doing that with these pieces of wood. The other thing of course that we need to do is to drill holes so that all of this lines up. And I'm actually going to do that on the drill press, on the drill press and I'm actually going to line up all of the pieces on the drill press and drill them all at the same time so I get a smooth transition all the way through and we'll show you how to do that when we get to that component but the first thing to do is to go back to the table saw and we're going to cut out that little slot and I'm going to show you a little trick on using plywood because as you may have know when we talk about woods uh, and you wonder why three-quarter inch plywood is never three-quarters of an inch it's designed exactly that way that, and, and that's from the plywood manufacturers they say no plywoods are to be wider than their designated width so for example a three-quarter inch piece of plywood can never be wider than three-quarters of an inch which means of course that it needs to be narrower so it's always slightly narrower and they always vary a little bit so we'll show you a trick on how to make sure you get your your slots exactly perfect so here we are at the bandsaw and the part that we need to cut out looks like this and this area here is calling for three quarters of an inch and this is at the back of the carriage that's the carriage that moves back and forth along the jig this part in here is what's critical and rather than trying to measure they call for three quarters of an inch in here but if you're using three quarters of an inch plywood of course it's not going to be three quarters of an inch so this part here is not that critical and this part here is also not that critical what is critical is this part in here so what I've done on my blank is I've measured from here to here and made that three quarters of an inch because that's that's the easiest measurement then rather than try and measure my plywood to get this area in here what I've done is I've actually marked it and I've used a piece of scrap plywood right on the material so that I get it as absolute close as I can and of course we're going to be doing this on the bandsaw because this is the safest tool to use to cut this slot So here we are at the drill press and we're ready to drill the two holes in the carriage part. This is the part that moves back and forth. And because we want this to line up perfectly, we've actually got a scrap piece of, of lumber and it's a bit stiff in there, which is good, that we actually lock these two pieces of wood together so that when we drill the hole, it's going to be exactly through both parts at the same time and they're actually going to be locked tightly together. 
So we'll go ahead now and we'll drill that hole. Now the last two holes that we're drilling, we're drilling on the carcass, on the, on the outside frame. And remember that we're using T-nuts, these little nuts with, um, with threaded insides and they have little catches to grab the wood. We're actually going to screw these in. We're going to lock them into the wood. We're going to screw them in uh, to lock them in. Uh, but we had to make sure that the holes would fit through and in our case it was 7 sixteenths of an inch that we used because we knew what the ready rod was that would fit in this so we sort of worked backwards. So now we just need to do the last two drillings and we're ready to start assembly. Okay, I'm making some progress here. Now, this is the carriage that is going to be going back and forth. And this is the base of our projector. This is the base of our jig right here. And this will be the front. And I have the two sides. There's that side and that side. Now, the reason I'm showing you this is what's critical that we noticed in the prototype is that this flat piece of wood here is where all of the wood that we're going to be making finger joints on it needs to be absolutely uh, vertical up and down here so in order to do that I actually have some really neat little tools and you can buy these at different places these are just little square pieces of aluminum and you can clamp them or you can drill them into the wood and use them like a like a almost like a semi-permanent square so that when you're assembling products you can assembling projects rather you can make them absolutely square and I've been using this for some of this project so where I'm going to use this now this part here is not really critical the sides are not really critical but what is critical is this area right in here so what I'm going to do rather than I have not fastened this down yet but what I am going to do is I'm going to leave this and right now when we come back I will have assembled the front and the sides and this part here I'll be leaving till very last because I'm going to use these or a square and what I'll do is I'll put a drill a couple of screws in the bottom so the top of this can actually still move back and forth so I can adjust it to make it absolutely perfect because this part is critical to uh, when it's going through the saw that it actually sits vertical so that's our next step is, is working back on the carcass now of our jig and we'll put the front and the sides on and we'll come back and, and finish up putting the, the carriage back in place. So here's a close-up of our jig and here's the carriage and of course the carriage will move back and forth like this. The saw blade will come through here to cut all of the fingers. But here's what I wanted to show you. Remember I said that this area here is absolutely critical. If this is not absolutely vertical to the base at exactly 90 degrees, what happens is your fingers don't line up properly. So I've put some screws in. You can see down in here, I've put a screw down at the bottom and that's why that's pivoting just a tiny bit. And what I'm going to do now is finish this up by, and I can't do this right now because I'm at an awkward angle so that you can see this, but what I am going to do is uh, off camera I'm going to and I've already drilled pilot holes down here I'm going to make sure that this is absolutely 90 degrees because in our prototype this was off by a, a degree or two and when you do that your fingers don't line up properly so what I had to do on the prototype was I had to put a little thin strip of veneer along here uh, to compensate for that and that's not ideal because then it affects uh, smaller pieces. So 
Um, that's what I'm going to do next is make sure that this is vertical all the way and I'll finish up by putting those screws in. Now for the final touches and the last thing to put on now or the next thing to put on is the ready rod. Now all we need to do is to lock this down at this side because this needs the, the ready rod needs to lock here and then the T-nuts that are on each side of the carriage will actually move the carriage back and forth every time we crank the ready rod. So I'm going to do that off camera and we'll make that nice and snug here and we'll be just about ready. The final thing we'll need to do is to put some rails underneath here so this doesn't slip and slide on the table. We have the jig, it's all put together. The last thing I need to do is to attach to the bottom two strips that will ride in the miter slots of the table saw. Everything's all set up now. We're going to do our first of two tests. Uh, and the first one we're just going to do a couple of sides of finger joints uh, and then after that we're going to do something different. So let's get started with our first test. Okay, let's look at our first test. There's the finger joints, and of course they were offset so that we could do them all at the same time. And how do they fit? Look at that, nice and snug. Now this is three quarter inch material, so there's a lot of friction in there, but those are nice, tight, nice, tight joints. So there's the joints we just made. As I said, this is three quarter inch material. This is just some scrap poplar that I have uh, just for testing things like this. And those are nice, tight, very tight joints. Those are perfect. Now for our next test, watch this. Now the next thing, the next test that we're going to do is I'm just going to lay this flat board. This is just some scrap material and I'm going to lay that in flat in the jig and I'm going to hold it in with a couple of 2x4's that I've trimmed and watch what we can do with this Now we'll take that out and turn that around. That's what we did. Now we're going to flip it over and turn it, reposition it. So, let's pull out and see what we have. There we have, well, we could call it a variety of things. It's a trivet. You could put hot things on that in the kitchen. What other things could you do with that? You might be able to do something with lampshades or make lamps, something like that. All sorts of intriguing possibilities by simply expanding the base of the box, point, box joint jig so that you can make different kinds of projects. This concludes our video on making the box joint jig. 
and you can make some great little boxes, sturdy, all sorts of different things that you can do with that and we even modified the jig so that we could do trivets and other things like that. Now we're going to be using this jig further on in the future for some special projects. So if you like our videos, we ask you to subscribe to them so that you get informed every time we upload a new one. We also ask you to subscribe to Woodwork Web. We do send out newsletters from time to time, about three or four a year, we don't inundate you and we do send out very good information that will update you and get you informed on latest things in woodworking. So I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to us.